Hi everybody, Mike here. Thanks for watching. Today I've got something a little different here. Instead of one of my videos where I've got cameras all over the ground, we're going to show you just a flight, just with the FPV camera, and that's it. No GoPro, uh, nothing else. So what you're looking at here is video from my 8-inch quad uh, taken the other weekend, and we're flying the Shark Bite, the HD Zero system, and I finally got all the noise cleaned up in my system, where it's looking pretty good, and we're going to fly this out to about one mile and see what it looks like at one mile out. I'm using the uh, new HD Zero Run Cam Micro Camera that has a one third inch sensor. And I've swapped out the stock lens with the uh, Run Cam RC25G. It's uh, their, what they call a GoPro style lens. It's a uh, glass lens and uh, it's advertised at 2.5 millimeter uh, focal length, but that's sort of worthless uh, for comparing lenses. It's actually uh, a uh, a retro focus design lens. It's pretty long physically, but it shoots very wide. It's one of the widest angle coverages out there. The field of view is wider than your GoPro camera set on uh, wide, wide mode. My uh, VTX today is the HD Zero TX 5M.1. It's the 500 milliwatt uh, stack that's uh, no longer being produced and uh, I'm using that for these long range flights and anxiously awaiting a new VTX, which I'd love to get my hands on someday. The, uh, the antenna for the uh, transmitter is the uh, TBS Triumph Pro long range. And what I'm using is also the SharkBite receiver module, but I've got it mounted on a tripod and a kind of a ground station uh, setup. Uh, what I've done is I've swapped out the patches for a couple of uh, video aerial systems, Crosshair Extremes, and also uh, on the SMAs I've got a couple of Oort uh, six-turn helical antennas also. Today I've got my brother-in-law helping me. He's uh, wanted to help out and he's learning how to point the antenna. So uh, today was a training day pretty much and a systems test. I made no adjustments to the video in post-production other than I resized it larger um, and um, I did just a little bit of sharpening uh, in post, just a little bit to sweeten it and other than that no color changes, no nothing. No exposure changes either. It was a pretty dark day. This is actually just around noon time. And, uh, sun's low on the horizon because of where I live it is far north and there was clouds so it was not a very bright day basically I was circling here in this area talking to my brother-in-law uh, helping him aim the antenna he's learning so you'll see how the feed goes from cleaner to not so clean right now it looks pretty good right there you've got the antenna on the ground station aimed pretty well oh and we now it's it's lagging. I've also noticed that uh, when my quad heads back towards the home point, I was uh, just sort of uh, passing behind these trees once in a while on purpose just to see how the video transmission dropped out. Just try to get familiar, just trying to get familiar and comfortable with that, uh, that data drop out on the feed. The, the digital system is a little, little bit different than the analog dropout. Here we go again, I think. We might go behind some trees here. Oh, maybe not. If, I feel as if um, analog was a little more forgiving when you went behind trees at distance. Um, but that's a trade-off for having a uh, higher resolution image. I really enjoy the higher resolution image because it helps me in two ways. One, it helps me avoid, uh, you know, obstacles, trees, when I decide to fly closer. And the other thing is I can be out of ways and turn around and I can see the home point and I can more readily make out the, you know, the features of the land to be able to 
visually navigate navigate back to the home point so it's really handy for seeing where we're going look at this shot here I mean, you can see this the, the smoke or the you know clouds low clouds way in the distance uh, the top of the mountains in the distance there uh, with analog that would be really blocky and I can even see here with the uh, see where my home point is I can see the road near or takeoff spot in the takeoff spot and uh, so I love it some people like narrower lenses some people like wider lenses when I do these long range stuff I like wider lenses because it gives me more of a an overall perspective of what you know where to fly what am I looking at you know I can be looking out off the side sort of the corner of my eye here and I can be keeping an eye on the home point and uh, make sure I don't you know block block the line of sight to the signal while still flying if you know if I really wanted a super sharper image I could put probably a slightly narrower narrower uh, lens on that would uh, focus more on the subject right ahead um, it would be a little cleaner image uh, but I wouldn't get quite the you know the wide experience of, of where I'm at so I'll stick with this for a while and see how it goes basically you know I'm just flying around and uh, just collecting data to review it later and uh, my helper on the ground is learning how to point the antenna we're just working on our communications my, sis, my uh, quad here has a little bit of uh, uh, shake in it it's not tuned perfectly there's some mechanical defects in this quad it's not very stiff and plus the camera you can tell once in a while when I hit about 40 miles an hour it starts to get some jello um, so normally I film the good stuff using a GoPro and there's some stabilization in that that takes that out uh, you know every time you build a quad at least every time I build a quad I figure out what I'm going to do on the next one and make it better so I've got a whole host of ideas in my head for the next quad and how to make it really really nice looking as far as for filming heading straight into the Sun this sensor does a pretty good job of the Sun in the sky a little bit of lens flare here obviously but that's gonna vary from lens to lens anyways enjoy the flight don't know what else to say. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, I've got another video you can check out that compares um, this lens on this camera to a nano size camera, the Runcam Nano HD MIPI camera for Shark Bite, and also a good lens on that, and compares the two. Uh, take a look for that, that link and check that out if you're trying to decide whether to go with a micro camera or a nano sized camera but I'm pleased this is the image quality is better than analog and we seem to be getting the range that we had with an, analog so why not when I first set the shark bite HD zero system up on my quad I had a lot of noise a lot of uh, speckles and it took me several flights and troubleshooting to figure out what was causing that I finally traced it down to uh, basically uh, electronic noise interference coming from the crossfire uh, the crossfire diversity nano receiver uh, the crossfire diversity nano uh, and the VTX that I'm using here they just don't like being close to each other uh, puts out a lot of noise I'd have a pristine beautiful image on the ground if my radio was not was not booted up and it's minute I booted up my radio and it connected uh, then the noise would show up 
So what I found out is uh, if I turn off the crossfire telemetry, it cleans it up uh, dramatically. The uh, diversity nano transmits at 40 milliwatts packets of data back to the controller. And so that was, I think, causing the problem. I also moved the components as far away from each other and I also rerouted all the wiring. So the wiring from both components were, wasn't near each other. And between those, those, uh, those three things, moving the, moving the crossfire away from the VTX, moving the wires away from each other, and turning off the telemetry, the crossfire telemetry, this is what the image looks like now. And that's pretty darn good, very few speckles. And that's, uh, you know, I'm quite pleased quite pleased in fact. I think with the right VTX, you know there's a new, supposedly a new one watt VTX coming out soon. With the right VTX and also with the right ground antennas, uh, high gain ground antennas, I could see people easily, easily flying these, uh, this crossfire system to oh, seven kilometers, five miles at least. Some of the breakup you see here is likely a result of uh, aiming issues with us on the ground. Like I said, my brother-in-law was learning how to aim the antennas. But it's still pretty good. The, the quad I'm flying has a custom made lithium ion battery pack that is rated at 6,000 milliamp hours. It's actually rated, it's actually in the specs, it says it's good to 6,200, um, but I just call it 6,000, uh, 6,000 milliamp hours. And um, I like to fly it no more than 5,200, um, but that, that pack is heavy. It's half the weight of the whole the whole quad. It's around 650 grams. The quad weighs around 600, 650 grams with the GoPro on it. Um, and I can fly slow and easy like this for a good 22 minutes or so, give or take. You're going to see here in a second, you're going to see data drop out. Uh, this little hill at the right, just uh, below the altimeter uh, where the trees are, I'm going to go low here and that's going to, some of those trees are going to block the line of sight and you'll see the, the video feed briefly break out right about here. Watch this right about now. There you go. That, those trees down low uh, uh, blocked the line of sight signal and, uh, and that was it. So you got to watch out for that when you're flying this thing, flying behind obstacles and trees. You're going to lose your signal once in a while. And that's part of what I'm learning is how to deal with that mentally. And uh, over time, I'll get more aggressive with my flying, fly lower and faster. I will say overall, I'm quite pleased with the SharkBite HD Zero system. Um, I've moved over all my long range quads from analog to the shark bite system and I've flown so far out uh, two and a half miles with a great signal and I think there's room for even even to go further if need be. Uh, the key is to have really good ground antennas. You can't control very much the transmission from the quad except put the most powerful transmitter on the quad but the problem you have is you've got a omnidirectional antenna on the quad so most of the energy that the quad is transmitting is being wasted it's going all different directions only a small sliver only a small percentage is actually being picked up by the ground so if you really want to push your range what you really need to do you know besides maximizing your your VTX of course but you really need to invest in antennas on the ground 
that can pick up a very weak signal. And that's what I've been experimenting with lately is larger, bigger, higher gain ground station antennas. Anyways, got any questions, post them in the comments. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it.